Yes, Victor, I can see you. And I'd rather not. Considering what you're doing right now. Anyway, let's get started. What's up? I am going to do a unboxing of a phosphate reactor. I'm going to see if I can remember how to set this up. I'm going to lower these phosphates in the damn tank. Phosphates are really bad. Phosphates and nitrates are bad. Um, nitrogen cycle goes like this, as you may or may not know. You feed your fish. They go to the bathroom. The pee and poo, known as detritus, breaks down into ammonia. Ammonia is taken away by bacteria. Bacteria turns the ammonia into nitrites, and nitrites aren't too bad, but nitrites turn into nitrates. They have to be removed from your tank because corals don't like them. And uh, you gotta keep it really low, close to zero. A little bit of nitrate is okay, around five is fine, because your coral has to have a little bit. But green here, algae, feeds on nitrates, and especially phosphates. Phosphates, um, everything in your tank has phosphates. Everything in the world has phosphates in it. You have to have very low phosphates. So the GFO is a brown powder, and it takes the phosphates out of the water, and I'm gonna be putting that powder in a GFO reactor. Now, I got it from Bulk Reef Supply. I bought it with my own money. And you can make your own reactor. Um, I was gonna use my bio pellet reactor by Reef Octopus, but I just bought Bulk Reef Supplies. So let's get that set up. I'll show you how to do it. I'm gonna put it in my sump with my protein skimmer. I usually keep it outside of the sump, but I'm gonna put it in the sump. And you have to change the GFO powder. Eh, I'm probably gonna do it like once a month. I'll test for phosphates and see. Um, I am feeling a lot better. Thank you for that. Um, you guys, this week has been a total hell. Uh, as you know, I've had a fever for every day, 102 average, severe chills, uh, just body aches, joint pain, dizziness, lightheadedness. It's been really fucking bad, pardon my Italian. But I'm doing a lot better. I'm using the gloves in the tank. I got a bacterial staph infection from my tank because dummy me was working in the tank with cuts on my hands and when I was removing my sand bed and all that nasty stuff was getting into my bloodstream. Um, didn't think it would ever happen to me. I never want to do that again. It was so bad. And then a few nights ago, my body just completely exploded in a rash because I had a severe allergic reaction to the antibiotic that I was on. Um, it was, it's very potent, also treated for MRSA, which is fatal, it can be fatal, and that antibiotic helped me a lot, but it also almost put me in the ER. Um, whatever, <laughs> that would have suck week. So, anyway, um, let's get started with this. Thanks for watching. Oh, I am using the Bulk Reef Supply GFO. Um, I will not be able to see you guys... Um, but, well, you know what? Maybe I'll put the box in front of the camera so I can see your comments. <clears throat> so, I got the Bulk Reef Supply BRS Granular Ferric Oxide. They've got one that's twice the concentration as this, but it's also twice as much money. Uh, but you will use less. So it kind of balances out to be the same. Why would you want the highly concentrated one? Because if you want to get um, phosphates lower in your tank faster, you could use the same amount as you would with this. Since it's higher concentration of GFO, phosphates are going to be taken out of your tank faster. I was going to do that, but that was like, I think, I can't remember, $55 and this was like $26. So I'm just going to go with this for now. What a lot of people do, you can put this stuff in a bag, okay, and just put it in a high flow area of your sump or in a canister filter as long as the water flows through it. Well, the recommended method is to put it in a canister filter, I'm sorry, yeah, a canister filter um, or a reactor, and I'm going to show you that reactor now, we're going to do the unboxing of it, and the water basically is pumped into the reactor flows through this stuff and is pumped out. This stuff 
you want it to tumble a little bit um, because if it doesn't, it can block together like a rock or clay and you have to keep it separated in order to work. Now, the tumbling doesn't really actually make it work better or worse, um, so a higher tumble isn't going to do anything. Some people mix this with carbon. I don't use carbon in my system. I would recommend not mixing this with carbon because this is hard granular material um, and carbon is soft, so this will grind your carbon up. So I wouldn't do that. I would get two different reactors, a carbon reactor and a GFO reactor. So this is really going to help my tank to kill that green hair algae and make sure it never comes back. Um, now this, this will help remove it. The best thing I can do is do a large water change, a few of them, of like 20 to 30 percent, and then this will help to keep it down and maintain it. This will not really pull it out of the water. I have to do some large water changes to get it there first, right? Got to do a little grunt work, but I'm not going to do that this week. I'm going to just keep doing top off water with my Zero TDS water for my RODI. My new RODI unit is excellent. The other one was broken. The TDS meter was reading six, which is not cool. It should be reading zero. A TDS meter, let me get one so you can see it. All right, this is a TDS meter, and this is actually going to, I'm sorry, I forgot the name it was going to, but um, last week or two weeks ago on Reef Radio, um, I hope you're watching because I'm gonna explain to you how this works because I can't find the instructions. I gave this away to somebody, I'm gonna mail it out today. Sorry, it's taken me so long. There are two other people that won something on the call-in show. I'm gonna mail you a little something from Amazon for your aquarium. I'm so sorry it's taken me a while. I've been really sick and there's been just too many things going on. I'm trying to catch up. This is my TDS meter that works great. It's from my old RODI unit and basically it works like this. So this blue wire was coming from the uh, RODI unit and then you connect another blue wire. It's going to go out into your water jug so where your fresh pure water is going into that's where this is going to go now there's a sensor a wire that is going to it's connected in here and you can't see it but it's in there there's two little prongs and the water is going to flow through this past the prongs and into your rubber made container your pure water so this is nothing more but a sensor and instead of going right from your rodi unit to your Rubbermaid container with the pure water that you've just made. This is just a stop off point T section where it's gonna register and read how pure your water is. You want it to be zero, all right? This was reading that my water was six. So there's a problem with my RODI unit. So this little TDS guy saved me and I knew that unfortunately I had to spend another $250 on a new RODI unit, nine on water is registering zero. So this goes from your last stage of your RODI unit and then connect another blue hose going into your Rubbermaid container. This one is going to come in off of your uh, main line in your house. So your water supply from your house is coming into here, tap into your sink, your RODI unit, and then the same thing. The T, this is gonna read what's coming in off your house. So it says what your water is like coming in off your house. Then this is gonna to go to your RODI unit, all right? So there's your quick setup instructions. I'm gonna get this in the mail to you today. So that's the RODI unit, uh, TDS meter, I mean. GFO, let's open the reactor box. All right, hopefully you guys can see this. Bulk Reef Supply Reactor. This is probably one of the cheapest things you can get on Bulk Reef Supply. Um, it's their reactor. It looks like a scaled down RODI unit. 
I was gonna make my own, but I didn't feel like it. I bought this with my own money. The day someone sends me something for free, someone is sending me something for free soon, by the way. I'm gonna do a video on that. A manual roller, I'm excited. Oh, look at this. It's like Christmas morning, look at this. Hopefully that's on camera. Okay. So, we have, let's make sure we're still filming. All right, we're filming, good. Okay, <clears throat> so this is what a reactor is. It's a GFO reactor, but a reactor is a reactor. We call it a GFO reactor because you put GFO in it. Granular ferric oxide, and that's this stuff, okay? Basically how it works, you're gonna take this off. I know a lot of you guys know this already, but some of them don't. It's gonna, co it's gonna come with this. This holds two cups of the GFO. Right. See if I remember how to connect this guy. So inside we've got two sponge guys, which you can get extra one of these, like the Brillo pads for wiping your face. Right. Um, the bottom. It's got little slits. All right. You're gonna take this pad, and I believe put it down in the bottom. Actually, I remember Bolt Group Supply saying you don't need these pads. All right, so I'm probably not. I probably just put one in the top. So basically, what happens is you're going to put your two cups of granular ferric oxide in here, and then you can put this sponge down. Let's say it fills up to here. You can just kind of pack the sponge down into here. In fact, I'll do it and show you guys. Then you're going to put this on top okay just it's got a little so the granular ferric oxide doesn't come out and then you put this here all right no big deal it's like a tube thing for the bank and then you're gonna put this in here and you're gonna screw this on now basically how this works is I picked up one of their cobalt MJ 1200 pumps I'll have links to this stuff in the video description, all right? So what happens is um, this is going to sit in your sump. Usually I would keep it outside the sump, but you're going to have these two hoses as well. It comes with the hoses. One's going to connect here. One's going to connect here. A pump is going to connect on one end. It's going to pump the water into this. It's going to push it out through this hole here down into this hole little thing which is going to go through the ferric oxide chamber it's going to push the water out the bottom filling this so the water between this reactor and this will be filtered out free of phosphates then it's going to come out of here which comes through here and out of the hose into your sump. So it's just brings the water in, the water gets filtered through the ferric oxide which absorbs the phosphates from your tank and then it spits it back out into your sump. That's basically how it works. All right, so I'm gonna set that up and once the phosphates are out of your tank, you won't have the green hair algae because green hair algae feeds on phosphates. Your water will look cleaner and your corals will be healthier because phosphates bind to the rock and the coral and it prevents the corals from getting what they need like calcium and all the stuff. There's a whole bunch of properties. If you need technical specs and the science behind why it works and doesn't, go to Bulk Reef Supply. They've got a lot of videos on that. Okay? So that's that. Um, I'm going to get my scoop and we're going to measure two cups and we're going to put it in there 
All right. And, uh, they've got like, you can control the flow. Also, bulk reef supply, this is the single jumbo model. They've got a much smaller model for like tanks that are 55 gallons or less. This is for like, I think up to 150. I have 125. They got a really nice brochure. So I'm gonna to read to you what this says. Unscrew the clear canister and remove the cartridge. Cartridge. Remove the cap from the cartridge and remove both foam discs. Optionally, you may choose to use the foam disc at the top to help capture fines if desired. You don't need to use the foam. Maybe I won't. Add the desired amount of GFO, max two cups. Replace the cap and reinstall the cartridge and canister to the reactor. Remove the reactor's outlet line from the tank or sump and place in a bucket. Plug the water pump and allow the water to flush the fines, the dust, from the GFO. When the water runs clear, place the outlet tube back into the tank or sump. Use the gray ball valve to adjust the flow rate so the material tumbles only on the surface. This will ensure that the particles do not solidify and create a solid block of GFO. Be careful to not allow the particles to tumble too vigorously, which will cause them to grind against each other and release fines into the water. Okay. So, pretty simple. Let me get the measuring cup thing. Back in a minute, kids. Alright, so I'm back. We have a half cup scooper. You guys seeing this okay? Yeah, I guess that's fine, okay. <clears throat> we have the half cup scooper, so I'm gonna put four of them in there because four times 0.5 is two cups. I'm smart. I aced English and math. Alright. <clears throat> Shouldn't take too long to set up. I don't know if you can see that. Put this in the box. Hope those don't fall out. One. Two, three, what a mess. Four, and a little one for good luck. Four point two five. Wow, kind of a lot there. All right, so I went through a third of this. So this will last about three months. It's not too bad, it's worth it. All right, so you know what? I'm gonna put this in here just, just like that. Keep it like an inch above. 
right? No big deal. I don't need it, but I'm gonna put that in there. Oh, let's see, where's the damn cap now? Sorry. All right, here it is. Okay, then we're gonna take this cap, and put it Are you kidding me? I wish the cap had like a better handle to grab onto. What the hell it was going on fine before? Okay, now there it's fine. All right, see that? Then we're gonna put this guy on. See, there's some play in there. Hopefully, it'll tumble enough. We're gonna put this guy in here. Okay. And screw this guy on here. All right, so it's labeled on the top, in and out. So, you guys still with me? No, I don't need foam at the bottom. I don't even need it at the top because Ryan wrote me that personalized note and he said, Steve, optionally you may choose to use the foam disc at the top to help capture fines if desired. So you don't need it. And there's a picture that shows you don't need anything. So it is what it is. Um, what a damn mess. Okay, so this tubing is great. I always feel weird like cutting the tubing, but it's gonna be too long. I am gonna sit it inside the sump. So I don't need it that long. I mean, I could technically go out and down like this. I don't like that though. Maybe I'll just trim it for the out and I'll just have like this. Because it's going to be sitting in the sump. Or should I keep it outside the sump? What would you guys do? Let me see. They always say put it inside the sump. I've had it outside before. What would you guys do? Death Mage. You would use less what? Thinking less tubing. I'll just put it in my. I want to put it in this sump right here. Got my rotter tube filtering the solids. Got the foam in there filtering the solids that I change every three or four days. I'm going to put this reactor right there next to the protein skimmer. That's what I think. Let's see if it'll fit. No problem, it'll fit. It'll be crammed, but it'll fit. So I guess I'll just keep this in there. Uh, so let me open this. Look at all these pieces. God.
Okay, I got a little. So this is your little, to restrict your flow, it's really cool. So we're gonna take this, connect this guy like so. Liam, cut it out. So that's connected right like that. This guy is gonna be connected right like in there. That'll, that'll just be perfect. Um, I could have sworn I ordered the foam front to this so stuff wouldn't get in this motor. This is going to take the larger particles so they don't get clogged, but I got my router tube with the foam to filter out stuff so I'm not too concerned because the sump is pretty clean. Alright, so I could put on the little ski bottom with the rubber grips, but I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to, because I'm not going to grip it to the side, all I'm going to do is just kind of connect it like so. And it's just going to hang. Right, big deal. It's like an inch from the ground. It's just gonna hang. It'll be in the water. That's all. I, I don't care. And then I'll have the other side like so. It'll be great. Um, so for now, I will put this long piece. I'll keep this piece long so we can let it flow out. We'll get some water, and I'll show you guys. We're gonna bleed this so the GFO is clean. Hi, babe, what are you doing? Come here, baby. Come here, Speedy. Come here. What's this? Who's this? What's this? Oh, it's a little beast. Look, it's a little beast. Hello, little beast. All right, let me get a bucket. I have used GFO before, like two years ago. I'm gonna use half of what I used um, next month. Let me get a bucket. Right, guys I got some pure RO water I just made zero on the TDS meter I'm gonna add it to the tank because I'm gonna wind up taking out a gallon when I do this next step okay so let me plug this up. That's what we got.
All right. There we go. This is going to be cut down. But only I'm going to flush it out first. More electrical outlets. That's exactly what I wanted. That's exactly what I wanted. Plug it in. And watch this. This is going to flush brown. See? When it stops flushing brown, then I will stop it and cut this line shorter and I'll be done. Okay, it stopped, it's clear again, so I'm gonna shut it off. Okay. done so what the flow is on that thing the only problem I can't see Well, I'll have to get a flashlight later. That's the only problem with it being in the sump like that. It's nice and clean, but I just can't see the, the flow. But it's in there, nice and compact. I'll have to move it a little bit to the right to get that rotter tube out of there. Rotter tube just drops down, it pulls. I love that rotter tube. All the water flows from the overflow down into it. I've got this awesome filtration media in there that I replace every four to five days. Catches everything. Gets really nasty. Catches all the solids and everything. Nice clear water flows out. And unlike some socks, the dirty media doesn't touch the water it stays up here I just take the end off take the media out put new media in and I'm done once a month I'll replace the GFO I'm gonna empty out this protein skimmer and then we're good to go that's it so the only thing I'm gonna run on this system now is the GFO reactor to keep the phosphates low. Uh, I got the rotter tube in there for my mechanical filtration and the protein skimmer to pull the stuff out of the water so it doesn't break down. Um, yeah, you know what? I may put it in the other sump. In fact, I will. The reason I didn't do that right now is because there's miracle mud in the whole bottom of that other sump. Okay. I don't want to stir that up. I may be getting away from the miracle mud, and if that's the case, this will go in there. So it's not a permanent thing. Okay, this will probably go in that other one. I'm going to put another rotter tube in the other sump. So I'll capture solids from both ends. It's going to be great. 
I'll get rid of the Miracle Mud, and that's where this um, is going to go. So that's the deal. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching, you guys. I'm going to end this now. Don't forget to subscribe. Join Rotter2Brief.com. Also, don't forget to join our Facebook page uh, and check out all the links to the things I use for this aquarium. To be honest, I'm I'm kind of fed up with the hobby. This tank looks like ass. Um, it's got a lot of green beard algae everywhere. I'm sick of it. I am so sick of it. So I'm looking forward to it looking nice and clear and pristine like it used to. It'll get there. It's just ridiculous. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'm so glad you guys took time out to watch this. And thanks for all the great well wishes and everything. Take care, you guys. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video.